Stocks and bonds, bonds and stocks. That's what we love. Uh, joining me here to close up the session into the bell, Kathy Jones, alongside Nate Peterson. Nate's a director of derivatives analysis, and Kathy's a chief fixed income strategist at the Schwab Center for Financial Research. Tell me about some pal, Kathy. Anything to uh, mine from that uh, speech? Well, it was largely more of the same that Paul usually delivers, but I will say <clears throat> recent outings, Paul has talked a little bit more about the balance of risks rather than just about fighting inflation. So it does look like some of the deterioration of the labor market is having an influence on, on the Fed's thinking. And so what I took away from it is, yeah, the balance of risk is balanced, but it's tipping towards needing a rate cut because we're seeing some deterioration in the labor market. And inflation is coming down pretty nicely. So um, we're still looking for a September rate cut from the Fed and another one in December. Uh, I've never been a wonderful student of the Fed linguistics, but I do wonder if he ever switches his order of topics to lead with disinflation rather than to lead with economic strength. Am I imagining something? Because it seems like he still always leads with economic optimism. Yeah, and there's no reason to be too, you know, too negative about the economy. It's still growing at a positive rate, and we still have relatively low unemployment. And I don't think as the chair of the Federal Reserve, he wants to be somebody pushing a really negative narrative unless he's really worried about recession. So um, I don't think that's the case. But I, I think when you put it in the perspective of the balance of risks, if it's tipping towards lower inflation, higher unemployment, why keep rates so restrictive? And the Fed has said, we think our rates are restrictive. So why would you do that if you think you're headed in the other direction? And so I think that that's where the narrative is shifting subtly. Uh, but my guess is we really won't get anything definitive out of the Fed until we get to Jackson Hole in, in August. Then we may get a signal that, yeah, the Fed is getting ready to cut rates. Okay. Where do you think this ranks, Nate, on priority for the equity market at this point? Is this all just kind of like fun body language analysis and like months out, you know, because at the end of the day, maybe I just watch a video, you know, like, well, where does it rank to you? Well, certainly rates uh, and the trajectory of rates are very important for the markets. We know that that's been the case. But yeah, look, th th this narrative, this preparation for the first rate cut uh, certainly has been going on for quite some time. And the market has been, you know, not only patient, they've been pushing stocks higher. I'd say the AI narrative and basically the when we shift into the uh, scrutiny about the AI monetization, that's going to be more important. So. Um, you know, look at the EPS growth and, and where it's coming from. It is from technology. This is a tech driven rally. Look at the e equal weighted S&P 500, you know, flat over the past six weeks. Meanwhile, the mar market cap weighted S&P 500 continues to move higher. But we're stretched, Oliver. If you look at the RSIs, not only are we at a 77 RSI on the NASDAQ composite, the S&P 500, it's a high RSI for the year. But on the NASDAQ composite and the NASDAQ 100, we also have a negative RSI divergence, meaning the index has gone up to make, it, make a new high, but mm. the relative RSI reading is lower mm. than the previous peak. So that's a negative divergence there. And even if we continue to rally up into the end of this month, I just feel like we're set up for a little bit of a sell on the news. I don't see how technology is going to be able to surprise to the upside, given how much has been priced in, given the performance here uh, over the past couple of months. Is that going to be more on the services and the uh, product side this time, Nate, like uh, Apple, Microsoft? We kind of Because those are the two that are now moving on pure valuation based on product expectations, right? Because there's still a lot of stuff that's supported by earnings. Not a lot, but a couple of the big ones that are really matter. And then there's a few others that have just been pure valuation move. Right. So if you take something like NVIDIA, that 
everything looks okay. If you right. look at the last couple of days, we've got an upgrade there uh, from KeyBank and from UBS. Their channel checks say that demand is still very strong there. If you go to something like a Microsoft, uh, what percentage of that revenue from their cloud services is coming from AI, that will be scrutinized. And so it might be a little bit case by case. We, na we may not be at a place where, hey, Microsoft, you know, tell us what your Copilot Pro growth rate is or your Gemini take rate is uh, alphabet at this point in time. But there's only so much you know, patience that an investor can have because what's built into the this whole AI theme is that these companies are going to be able to get some ROI on all of the AI monetization, the AI-enabled revenue, as Goldman Sachs calls it. This is the phase three. At some point, this is going to have to show up. And if that does fall short, this is going to even tie back to the whole infrastructure bill because why continue to plow money into new infrastructure build out if the ROI isn't isn't matching up to expectations there. So if it's not this quarter, it'll be coming soon. But even if they do deliver this quarter, the setup is likely some profit taking, some selling the news that might occur. Sure. I like it. All right, good assessment. Uh, first, we got to get through all the other ones. Uh, it's still two weeks away. Uh, uh, Kathy, on a closing thought, is the credit market at all as imbalanced as the equity market is right now? Well, credit spreads are just tight uh, pretty much across the board. We've seen a little bit of widening in the really low end of high yield, but in general, credit spreads are tight. And, um, you know, you're going to need a catalyst to make that change. I think it will eventually change as it always does. But right now, as long as these stock markets keep performing and the economy doesn't go into recession, it looks like they're gonna stay tight across the board. All right, uh, good stuff. Thanks guys. Kathy Jones, Nate Peterson, appreciate the commentary.